Hey guys, Jess here from Knockout Print Shop, and today I have a video for you on my February 2020 goals, how I did, reflecting on those, and kind of talking to you a little bit about how I go about setting my goals every month. Okay, so I used my Moxie Life Horizontal for the past month and have been trying to go through and use the Moxie Life method when it comes to goal setting. So I'm gonna start off by kind of telling you what my process is like, then I'm gonna flip the camera down and show you actually what this looks like in the planner. So first things first, what I typically do is do the reflection. So in the Moxie Life Planner, one of the great features I like about it is that it does have a monthly reflection at the back of each month. And again, I'll show you this with the camera pointing down so you can see it. But I like the questions she has on here. I'm gonna go over my specific answers here in a second, but I think they're great questions to kind of prompt you to think back to your month, reflect on what worked and didn't work, and give your month kind of a rating, and then also help you kind of think ahead to the next month and what you want to switch and change and tweak. So I start off by doing the monthly reflection. Last month in January, I used our insert that we had, our monthly reflection, because there's a few components I like a little bit better, but since we're not selling that anymore, I stuck with just using the Moxie Life reflection that's in her planner. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of talk you through how my month went. February was kind of a shit show. So <laughs> let's start with question number one. So she first prompts you to say, what are your biggest wins for the month? And I think even if you've had a crappy month, it is important to look back and try to figure out what did go well, what were your highlights, wins, accomplishments, things like that. So honestly, not to be negative, but February wasn't like the best month I've ever had in my life. And it actually took me a little bit to figure out what my wins were. So they're not the most epic things and that's totally okay. Wins can be tiny little baby steps too. So it was a lesson in kind of embracing what I preach. So my first one was that we discontinued the inserts again. So we made that decision. Now this again, I think I said this last month when we did this in January, um, it's a win in the fact that we had to make a hard business decision. This was absolutely horrible. If you're watching this and you like our inserts, I know how frustrating it is that not only did we discontinue them in January, thought we found a solution, brought them back in February, had to discontinue them again. It's frustrating for you guys that like the product and disappointing, and it's really hard for us to know that we're disappointing you. And as a product, we really enjoyed offering, but unfortunately, there was so many issues behind the scenes, like with printing and production, that it just isn't feasible for us to continue offering those. We're still seeking, like looking for different solutions, but long story short, before I go too much on that tangent is we, um, the decision itself was a win because making hard decisions, even if it's something that disappoints other people or it's frustrating for yourself, is definitely something that is worth giving yourself credit for. Number two is that we took the dogs to their annual vet visit. Again, these are like little things, but just like human health checkups are not always the most fun things to go through. So I'm glad that we went ahead and got the dogs all checked out and they're good to go. Number three is assigned a new coaching client. So if you watch my videos before, you probably know I do planner coaching, goal coaching, fitness coaching, things like that. So I just signed a new goal coaching client, which is really exciting. So that was a that was a bigger win of the three things. I always do things in three, so that was my third one. Okay, her next prompt is things that are currently working in your life, which again, I do like the language behind this question because it makes you think about um, not just what your wins were, but thinking about the systems that you have in place and what is working for you. So number one, I put my AM and PM routine. This is something I've been working on and it's been going really well for months. I think I'm almost hitting like a year since I really started to integrate AM and PM routines. Now throughout this year, the routine has change depending on seasons and things going on in my life. But in general, having a consistent AM, especially for me routine, as well as a PM routine has been very helpful in just kind of keeping some structure to my life, especially considering we work from home, we don't have jobs to go to, so we had to build in that structure. Second thing that's working, and it's been working for us, or me in February, was weekly planning. I have been really good. You know, we're two months into the year and I've been doing really well with, you know, towards the end of the current week, starting to plan for the next week. I don't do a ton of planning ahead. I kind of put the framework of my stickers down, note things that are, you know, for sure happening, different little pieces of my week, but that has been really working, making sure I make time to weekly plan. Um, and then number three is our finances are going really well. While we're having some business challenges, the finance management ourselves is going really well. YNAB is doing great. 
um, other than a couple things recently, our investments that we have, we're doing really well. And we kind of have that, you know, when you invest, it's kind of one of those things where you put it over there and just try not to pay attention to it, which is, that's been doing great. And then taking extra money that we make from, like I make from coaching or Matt makes from photography jobs and putting that into a, uh, just a regular online savings account for saving for house costs. When we buy a house, closing costs, all of that, that's been going really well. So those are the three things that are going really well and have went well throughout the month of February. The next question is things that are not currently working in your life. This again makes you kind of pause and go, okay, well what like in my systems, in my routines is not working, you know, that I need to take a look at and kind of assess. Okay, so number one, something that's not working great and isn't necessarily a system would be our business. Actually, Knockout Brunch Up is really, um, like the whole sticker shop industry is changing and has been for the past couple of years and the shop is not doing as well as it did in years past. I'm probably going to make a video on this as well to kind of help you guys understand the whole process of having a sticker shop. But um, that's been a struggle. We continue to try to figure out how to uh, sustain and grow, but it's definitely been something that isn't working in the sense of a financial goal. Our business definitely works in the sense that we enjoy the freedom that we get from working from home. We're definitely what I would call kind of like time rich. We have good, we have a lot of time, um, but there's trade-offs with that sometimes. And this whole um, self-employed world, sometimes depending on the industry you're in, you may, you trade off having time and freedom and flexibility for some stability and security and oftentimes even, you know, revenue, finances, income, whatever you call it. So. That could be a whole nother video. Number two, um, what's not working is I continue to be conflicted on the direction I want to go with my coaching. So I just shared with you that obviously I do do some coaching. Um, I have been a health and fitness coach, used to own a gym for years. I mean, most of my adult life, that was my career. And when we moved from uh, Chicago and started this kind of like, went to Raleigh, North Carolina, now we're here in Tennessee, um, I closed my gym and was kind of burnt out from being a coach and being in the fitness industry. And now, as we approach two years since that's been over, I've been doing a few little bits of online coaching with some former members, but I'm starting to realize that is a strength of mine and it is something I could potentially pursue in a more um, intentional, kind of a bigger way, and that could help supplement our income. And it's something that I obviously have been doing for a long time, have skills at it, whatever. So I just kind of constantly am conflicted because there's still things I really do not like about the fitness industry. I'm not sure how I want to put myself out there in that world. So it, I still am kind of figuring it all out. So I need to make some decisions. So what's not working is I'm kind of still in limbo. I need to make a decision and either say once and for all, what I have right now is what it is and I don't want to build it or say, put it out there, see what happens. If it flops, not a big deal. So I think that's kind of the indecision around it is what isn't working. Um, number three is efforts to grow our business, kind of continuing on with the whole um, print shop thing is the different things we're trying to put in place don't seem to be gaining traction. You know, you'll if you own a business or you're starting a business or you've owned a business in the past, you know that there's a lot of information out there from other business owners that make money off of people that are trying to grow their business that often tell you, you know, different tips and things like that as, as far as like email, SEO, all the things you should be doing. And I'm pretty diligent about doing all of those things from mailing listings to social media planning, to getting content out there, to working on our website, all the things you're supposed to do, we do. Um, so it can be very frustrating. So for whatever reason, the things that we have in place from a marketing standpoint, if you want to call that advertising, you know, content, all that don't seem to be working in the sense that they're, we're, they're not gain, we're not gaining new customers and revenue is not going in the direction that we'd like it to go. So that's that. Um, and then last but not least, I actually had four for this category, but the last thing that isn't currently working is fun and recreation is really, really lacking in my life. This has been an issue kind of my whole life. I'm a, I like to work. I like the purpose and the efficiency and the worth and the value I, I feel when I'm working and feeling productive and contributing. So I tend to spend more time in my work life than I do in fun and recreation. So what Matt and I have both noticed in the past, I don't even know, it's been a while now, probably since we started moving, or maybe it's just kind of how we always have been, that we both really enjoy working so that our fun 
and recreation parts of our lives tend to lack, and more so right now. And I think that's for a few reasons. One, the weather has been crappy, and a lot of our fun and recreation has to do with going outside, hiking, camping, exploring. So when it's been rainy and gloomy, that's put a damper on those things and cold. Um, the other thing is when you're trying to be conservative and frugal, you don't want to expend a lot of money on fun and recreation. So that puts a little bit of a damper on things. We still try to get outside and do different things that are free or co more cost effective, but that definitely does hinder maybe embarking on a new hobby or putting more time and money into different things that are in that fun and recreation world. Um, and then last thing that's kind of affecting that is we're really, really in house hunting mode and we're we tend to spend most of our free time now like literally scouring the interwebs for homes and then driving around looking at homes. So that has consumed a lot of our time for a very long time, which then affects you know, our time when it comes to fun and recreation. And in fact, when there's days we don't have any houses to look at, we're kind of like, well, what do we do? So it's almost like the whole house hunting thing has just kind of consumed our lives. So all of that to say that our fun and recreation is just not working. So there's that. Okay, then the next question is, what have I learned this month? Um, number one that I've learned is I need to be outside in nature to kind of feel recharged and to think. The quietness of just walking, whether it's simply just outside in our neighborhood, going on a hike somewhere at a local forest preserve, you know, that definitely helps my mind shut off in a way where I don't feel obsessive. Maybe I can get more creative or maybe I can just calm my mind down. So I definitely need to be able to get outside in nature, which again has been hard because the weather here has just been horrendous. Um, number two, second thing I learned this month is that sometimes things just don't make sense. I like to understand things. I like to know why I like to research. I like to contemplate and things like that. And so when we are frustrated by the direction of our business and I can't seem to figure out what is causing it, it can be very frustrating. And I think sometimes you just have to let go. Like if you're kind of going through a process where you're banging your head against the wall with a goal or an endeavor and you're really trying to figure out the why, I think that's super important to figure, to seek that out. But then at some point, I think we have to let go of control a little bit and step back and look at, okay, I'm doing everything I, I need to do. If you're being really, you know, I'm being really honest with myself, I feel like we are. So sometimes things just don't make sense. And what is what is that telling us? What do we need to do instead? Or what, what do we need to do with that information? So that's something I've learned. And last but not least, look at the data and plan ahead. So a lot of times in any goal you're pursuing, you can feel like you feel things are going a certain way, right? Like, oh, I feel this is going crappy or I feel I'm doing really well at this. And it's super important to remember our feelings are not the most accurate gauge of the, of anything really. I mean, yes, they tell us how we emotionally are doing, feeling about something, but they don't, aren't always reality. They're not facts. So we have to look at data. If it's a business thing, look at your revenue, look at your costs. If it's a health and wellness thing, we're looking at our habit consistency, frequency of exercise, all of that. If you're looking at changing your spending, you're know, looking at the data, looking at your, your budget, things like that. You need to look at the data. And then once you have that data, that can inform your decisions and help you prepare for the future. So I think what I've learned is that look at the data, accept it as a reality, and then start to take those, take that data and plan ahead so that you're prepared for, you know, the different, where things could go. I'm not really making sense on that, but I think you get the point. Okay, let's move on to the last few things. What improvements or adjustments do I need to make going into the next month? So based on everything I said, one of the things I need to do is spend more time on fun and recreation. This again seems like silly that this is so difficult for me, um, but it is. So I don't even know what that looks like. So I definitely, um, Matt and I, now that the weather's turned, we can go out and explore, we can go on hikes, Matt can take his waterfall pictures and nature pictures. You know, I'm trying to get back into like being in the kitchen and like trying to make new recipes and new things, that's fun for me. Um, so trying to figure out ways that we can inject more fun and recreation into our lives is the improvement I need to make for March. <clears throat> Number two, decide on the direction I'm taking and action steps for the coaching business. So like I was saying before, I just need to like, it's one of those shit or get off the pot, right? Like either just stop ruminating on this and sitting on the fence and limboing back and forth and make a damn decision already. So I need to figure that out. It's, it's one of those things that... Uh, maybe you guys can relate to, you start to play the different scenarios in your mind and the different pieces that you need to put into place and 
the obstacles and you try to plan ahead so much and, and uh, mitigate so much risk or whatever that you just get paralyzed. So I think I have a list of all the things I need to get done if I embark on this endeavor and put more effort towards it, but I keep kind of going, well, if I do this, what about this? And if I do this, then this, and I need to just stop doing that. Either do it or don't do it. So that's kind of the adjustment I need to make um, attitude and mindset wise. Last thing is continue going on outdoor walks. It definitely makes an adjustment to our mood. Our, our bodies feel better when we're walking more instead of sitting in the office and just kind of like plugging away at things. So that's definitely huge. What am I grateful for most right now? Um, the resources to weather the storm. So what I mean by that is obviously if you've owned a business, we own a business, there's going to be highs and lows. Right now we're definitely not at a high. We're at like a medium low-ish point. And I'm grateful for the fact that we have made responsible decisions financially so that we can weather this storm. Whether this storm means that we're just having a slow month and that things are gonna go back on the upswing, we have resources financially that will take care of us. Um, if that means we need to go explore other income sources, we have the means educationally and um, we're just resourceful so we can do that. So just I'm grateful that we have the resources and the skills and we've made good decisions so that we can weather the storm. Um, habits I wanna nurture next month is definitely walking, so that's pretty simple. And then she has you rate your overall satisfaction for the month on a one to 10 scale and I put a six. This is probably the lowest I've put on um, a monthly reflection ever. And it's weird because no, this isn't the worst experience. I mean like we're not dying. We're not going broke. It's not, you know, we're not at the end of our wits end or whatever, but it, it's been a pretty frustrating month along with the challenges of the business, um, the emotional stress of that, getting the flu, we also have the flu, all of that just kind of amounted to not being a super great month. So that is my reflection um, for February. So I'm gonna flip the camera over. Like I said, I'm gonna show you all this because it'll be easier to continue talking about this once I show you then how I take this reflection, review my annual goals. So after I reflect, the next thing that I do is I review my goals for that month, um, how I did on each of those, if I accomplished them or not. Um, I kind of glance at my annual goals, just kind of see how those are going. And then I set my goals for the upcoming month. So the rest of this process, I will show you now with the planner. Okay, so we talked through my reflection, which you can see here. So I don't want to stay on this page too long, but just to show you what it looks like, nothing fancy. Obviously, if you're using the monthly reflection in the Moxie or some other form of a monthly reflection prompts, you could make it prettier with highlighters and stickers. But this is how that sheet looks, just a nice, easy worksheet to follow. So once I do this, like we talked about, I go back and I look at my monthly goals. So this is what the monthly goal section looks like on the Moxie Planner. I'm sure you've seen this obviously in my previous videos. If you're using an Inkwell Press, you would be looking at your mission board for this purpose. So basically what I do here is I had, obviously the end of January, set these goals based on the same process we talked about. I used our little scallop stickers here um, that are color coded to each area to write down the goals that are in each category for that particular month. Now, for me, I do not have massive goals in each area. So basically kind of what I've done is I've put down um, some goals, some things that are more, take more effort and some things that are maintenance or just to do almost, this is like a dashboard of things I need to remember to do for that month because I just don't have that many goals. So when it comes to personal, I had a couple things like take the dog, make the vet appointment, decide on our thrive marketplace or market subscription, buy new shoes and buy new clothes. So I have all of these. I highlighted the one that was like the number one thing I need to get done in that category. And as these things got done throughout the month, I put a little X in the scallop. These two things didn't get done, so I put an arrow to transfer those to the next month. Um, for fun and recreation, concert date night, Matt and I went to a concert, and then I was also gonna make a list of all the farms that I wanna go visit. This got done, this didn't. Um, work and learning is one of my bigger, you could see these two, and finance are the, two of the biggest categories that I focus on. So I had a bunch of things here. Um, I have a planner coaching email blast. I got it drafted and edited, so I'm counting that as done. I didn't release the, the email yet. Um, do two FaceTime kind of like talking head videos. That was my number one thing, so I also used our little double arrows to kind of go, this is the thing that's the major thing. Um, 
launch Patreon, which we did. So I haven't talked much about that yet because it's just kind of in the little beta version, but I did launch a Patreon for our channel. Um, start working on a beginner strength training program. That has a dot by it because it's in progress. And then research WordPress themes or websites for the Coach Jess website. So all of this got done. Um, some things are still in progress. Family and relationships, I don't have much going on here. Um, talked about that a lot before in other videos, but that is something like, again, because Matt and I have moved so much and we haven't planted roots yet, that this whole friendship relationship thing is kind of not super great, but um, Matt and I do have weekly lunch dates, so that's always in there. Health and wellness, these are pretty simple things that most are automated and I just try to work on just staying consistent with. We have get up by 6.30, bed by 10.30, walking outdoors daily. I wrote on here, did okay with that, but that was one of my number one goals. Uh, research dentists, I did do that. Spiritual and personal growth, read daily. Finances, a lot of these are just my end of the month checklists, my budget, pay bills, run P&Ls. The two major things were gather tax docs for 2020, or sorry, 2019, and then transfer my extra um, money that we kind of allocate in YNAB to savings to move it to the actual account, the savings account for saving for our house. Um, physical environment was make a kitchen inventory list. I was going to do this and then I'm like, I don't think that really matters. So I just put not sure it's necessary, but I did make a go-to recipe list. So this is, so after I do my reflection, I kind of look at all my goals. I am checking these off throughout the month as I finish them. Um, and let me flip through really quick to the weekly action steps to show you that before we bounce back to annual goals. So this is what my monthly looks like. It's just some, like I said, I got about three that are a little bit more, need more effort, um, and the rest are kind of maintenance, easy things. Um, so then we go into the weekly actions. I have not still gotten much use out of this notes and reflection page, not anything because of this planner. I just haven't done anything with this page. Um, so weekly, weekly action steps sometimes are just transferring a monthly task or goal onto the weekly part. So here again, I used our scallop boxes in the light mixed palette and put some of these things down. So we have make vet appointment, did that, research shoes. I researched shoes but haven't bought any. Farm list, got an arrow, um, different work-related tasks got all completed. Everything else kind of got completed. Um, I did research dentist and put the dentist that I found. Um, let's see, hang her dog paintings, that got an arrow. So anything that doesn't get done gets an arrow to go to the next week. So that was the first week. The second week, again, didn't use this page. Um, I think, no, okay. Um, so then we have, again, some other tasks that were pulled from monthly that are here and some new things. So I have decide on Thrive. What I had done here with this one Decide on the Thrive subscription by 212. I went, once I wrote that down, I went to this week and put this here so I wouldn't forget. Um, had to return some library books. So again, these are just kind of like personal tasks, like don't forget to do them this week. So some of these action steps are very small. Um, we have the concert, decide on going to these fights, uh, boxing matches, we ended up not doing that. Um, again, all the work things got done. Everything pretty much got done here. Oh, that needed an arrow. It didn't get done. Some things didn't get done, but most of these are my automated general things that are related to these monthly goals or tasks. Then we go to the next week, no no use of this page. This was flu week, so I didn't even use stickers here. Still didn't buy shoes. You can see a lot of these tasks keep getting bumped over to the next week, didn't make my farm list. Dots, kind of using this bullet journal concept. Some things are in progress. I don't even know what this meant. I wrote down list of ideas. I wrote a question mark. I don't even know what that meant. I wrote it probably when I had the flu and I had no idea. Um, but any task that got done got an X. Anyone that was in progress or did okay got a dot. And again, things that got bumped over got bumped over. So that was that week. But this week was kind of, even in my planner, kind of a shit show because I was had the flu. Okay, then we get to, I think this is the last week. Again, no, not using this page. This week was the last week of February. Same thing. Still didn't buy my shoes, so this goal never got done. Fun and recreation got a sad face because I didn't do anything. So again, I'm using the scallop for most of this stuff. Probably ran out, yeah, I did. I ran out of red scallop boxes and didn't feel like taking another sheet. So that just got an arrow. But most things here got done. Um, I'll make notes, sometimes things didn't get done like crappy weather, so walks didn't happen. Some things still got bumped over. 
and that is that. Then we get to the reflection. So my goals, again, are not super crazy epic, and that's totally okay. I'm starting to get used to that. And again, using this as somewhat of a dashboard for things. I do try to focus on the main kind of areas I'm focused on here would be work, um, health and wellness is pretty automated for me. I'm just focusing on getting on those walks, making sure I'm staying on top of that. And then our finances. This is pretty much automated, but that's like mentally where my focus is at. These other areas are just kind of like doing their thing and they're okay. They're not like in a bad state. They just don't get a lot of attention, nor really for me need a lot of attention. So that's what February looked like. Now if I go back to look, so what I'll do next is look at my annual goals. So I brought also my, um, vertical because when I did I did the um, life assessment in both of these because I thought I, I don't know I did it in here and then I'm like I'm gonna use the vertical why don't I do it in the vertical too I think I like how it looks in the vertical better so we're gonna look at that okay so basically there's a mix of like these are, are essentially the same stuff on both these pages this one I use a little more stickers but same kind of stickers so I kind of what I'll do is I'll look through here you know I keep this little mini bookmark in here to note this section, but you have different things in each of these categories. So with personal, I kind of broke these three up. Again, I haven't focused a lot on personal goals because a lot of my personal goals have to do with doing certain hobbies and fun things related to once we find a house. So some of these areas are kind of on pause. Um, fun and recreation, I talked about that, so we're not gonna go over that. Work and learning, you can see this cluster of a section um, is where the most activity happens. So I kind of go through at the end of the month to go, okay, have I made progress on that? What big goal do I need to focus on next? And that's kind of what this cluster looks like. It makes sense to me. Um, you can see which areas are lighter. Um, some things got marked off that are not relevant. I'm not gonna focus on doing handstands. I basically get nauseous every time I'm upside down. Um, ended up not needing to get a colonoscopy, so that's taken off. And those are the only two things that have been taken off of my list so far. Once March is over, I'm gonna reassess all of this for quarter one and see where we're at and see if I need to take any else, any other pieces off. Um, basically, buy house is our number one goal of this year. And then over here in physical environment, these are kind of like things like wish list things that we wanna buy for the house, different things like that. So I look at this briefly to go, okay, is there anything I'm ignoring? Is there something that next things in these areas that I wanna focus on? And then I take into consideration this the annual, I take into consideration how I did, oh wait, this is the wrong planner, how I did for that month with my month goals. Okay, most of that got done. If there's arrows, those are gonna go on to March. So then we look at March, and here we have March. So I used the mini hexes this time and did highlight some of the main things that I needed to get done in each area. Look, buy shoes is still there. Um, I want to try to make ice cream, bought my ice cream maker, so that was that's done, that part of it. Have a handful of work things, and I used this big arrow because to me all of these things are important, so I did not highlight any particular one. Lunch date with Matt, that's the thing that goes on there every month. Um, outdoor walks, again, is my main focus. So you can see I'm not changing my goals a lot every month. I, I tend to keep things on there for a long time until they're, especially habit-based things, until they're really automated. I don't want to add anything else and like, you know, take my attention away from the main goal. Um, same thing here, transfer to the house, get our 2019 taxes done, house hunting continues. So basically anything that didn't get done in February gets pushed to the March. And then habits that I'm still working on get put here. And then anything in these bigger categories that have to do with my bigger goals, working, work business stuff, and finance stuff, um, I make sure that those pieces are on here. Then we go to week one, action steps, and you can see buy shoes is still on there. Um, read daily always goes on there. Walk always goes on there. Lunch date always goes on there. Have some cleaning tasks here in physical environment. Some work-related things here. Read daily always goes on there. And then my usual weekly um, financial pieces. So that is, I know this video is so long, guys, but that is my process of setting goals. Again, I don't have a ton of big goals on my agenda for this year. Obviously buying a house is a big goal, but it's not something you can do every day other than house hunt and save money for it. Um, and then there's a bunch of different like work pieces, but I just wanna kind of show you my process 
and so you can see what it looks like in the planner. Hope you guys found that video helpful. How do you set your goals? Do you do a monthly reflection? Let me know all that stuff below so we can talk a little bit more about helping each other with goal setting and reflecting. Make sure that you subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you guys in the next one.